Hello and welcome back to the Hoops Crush Podcast. As always, I'm joined with my co-host Eric, and today we're going to be talking about some of the games that have gone down after Halloween. The last game we got to talk about, I believe, was the Raptors game. We're going to give on our give our who's crushing it, who we're liking this week, or for the last week. Uh, but other than that, Eric, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself, Brady? I'm doing good as well. I'm excited to talk about some of the things we've learned about the Blazers. Um, you know, we went on a little fun win streak, came to an end, unfortunately. We got some more injuries, so it's just like been a downward. It's been a roller coaster so far this season, I feel like. Yeah, the injuries have obviously put a damper on things. Uh, but yeah, it was fun winning three games in a row. But unfortunately, um, now the season's looking kind of bleak. Yeah, it should have been four in a row, but, you know, we'll talk about it. Uh, so last game, I believe, as I said, we talked about the Raptors game. So we're just going to go straight to, uh, Detroit where, um, it was an interesting one. It felt like a game we were going to lose, but then, uh, it felt like I, if I remember correctly, this was the game that Shane Sharp started going off in the, was it the third or the fourth quarter? I can't remember exactly. Yeah. 29 points, third quarter, yeah, right? Second third half. Quarter, yeah. He scored yep. all of his points in the second half trying to serve my remember my memory uh but yeah interesting game scoot uh this isn't is this the game scoot got hurt or was it the memphis game man I he can't. got hurt and he got hurt in the the detroit game yeah oh he got hurt. okay i could for some reason he played he played into the third quarter i think and then didn't play the rest of the game yeah but uh i mean this this uh this this was a fun three win streak we had going uh for sure but unfortunately all came to an end against memphis uh, but Scoot had, or not Scoot, Shaden Sharp, man, uh, first half was non-existent. It felt like in the game and then they really got him involved and he closed that out one for us. So, or closed that one out. So the Detroit game was a ton of fun and I love what I've seen out of Shaden Sharp. DeAndre Ayton obviously has been great on the boards as well throughout this stretch. Um, man, it's, it, the team is interesting. Cause like we'll have our ups and down, mo down moments where like Jeremy Grant will be shooting too much. It feels like our Brogdon will be shooting too much. And then. Other times, Sharp is a ton of fun to watch. Like, it's just been, I don't know, man. The season's been weird, I guess. Yeah. Uh, my whole thing about this season is just hoping to see progress from the young players. And so seeing it already from one of them, at least uh, in Sharp, is rewarding enough. Um, if nothing else happens other than he becomes a star this season, I think it was a successful season, no matter what a record was. Um, and I think he's kind of becoming a player that you could definitely see blossoming into an all-star level player. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I don't know where this list came from, but I saw a bunch of people talking about today where they listed their like top 25 players under 25 with the most potential and I found it interesting mm -hmm. that Shaden Sharp didn't make the list at all, uh, which was kind of kind of weird to me. But I feel like that's just, you know, it comes with probably playing in Portland. And uh, I think I feel like he's just, you know, so even keeled and like, obviously, his personality is like nothing crazy. So maybe that's a huge reason why that a lot of people don't know yet. But I think eventually, as we keep going down the season, if he keeps playing the way he is, I think people are going to start to know who Shaden Sharp is. I mean, they should already know, but I feel like there's a lot of people that don't. Yeah, for sure. And it was ESPN that had the list. Yeah, Scoot ESPN was blazed. the only blazer at 23. Um, as as much promise as Scoot has, I don't think you can put him above even Anthony, let alone uh, Sharp right now. So, um, yeah, I don't I don't really like that list that much because um, I feel like they're ignoring Sharp, but. At the same time, you got like Bancaro at fourteen. You know, like um, there, there's a lot of talented players under twenty five. So I, I also know that a lot of players are putting up actual numbers and doing things. Uh, but it's just weird to base a lot of it on that, and then include Scoot on there at twenty three without him having hardly done anything in the NBA so far. Yeah, ESPN lists are always weird, as we know, but I just had to bring that up. And then, of course, we had the in-season tournament. Uh, how do you feel about the, the the red court that we had? Did you like it? or? Um, I actually don't mind it. I don't mind I, it either. Yeah, I would like – I don't know. It's it's only for, what, two home games? So, yeah. worst-case scenario, you hate it, and you only have to put up with it one more time this season. Um, and then whatever the two opponents – 
away courts look like. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was a cool change of pace. I kind of wish that the out of bounds was a different color than the inbounds because it made it somewhat confusing. Mm-hmm. And uh, poor Rich, if he's uh, watching the show, um, oh yeah, man, <laughs> he had such a hard time watching that game with his uh, his eyesight problems. Oh, so, for sure. So I felt really bad for him during the game, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't mind it. It's just like a change of pace thing. Um, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad it's not our permanent court but <laughs> yeah definitely i thought uh, i thought it was a little overblown how how many people hated it yeah me too i thought it was overblown as well a lot of people were giving it you know hate. i mean the nba is trying new things and it's something i always love about the nba it feels like they are trying to do things every year sometimes mm. it doesn't always work we know that but other times they can be really fun um, what do you but, so speaking of that what do you think of the jerseys every year are you do you like that they switch it up every year or? uh it's interesting because like the nfl it feels like they don't change their jerseys all that much right but then you have the nba that's trying to do it every year and like for the first couple of years it was cool but i mean i think we're starting to notice that it's hard for <laughs> nike i guess because yeah. i mean i don't know though because i see a bunch of like does you know obviously mock designers on like instagram or twitter coming up with some pretty cool ideas so, I mean, I don't know if it's just a lack of creativity on the guys that are designing these jerseys because I've seen some cool ideas. And, I mean, obviously, as long as you're creative, I think ideas can go on forever. So, I don't know, man. It, it sucks because, like, if they're not going to be as creative as they want, then, yeah, I don't think they should be making jerseys every year because it's not working right now. Yeah, I I kind of like the mix of jerseys. Um you know, like the Ducks here in Oregon uh, are known in college for having crazy jersey combinations and all these different styles and stuff like that. So I don't mind them. I just wish that like some of the, I don't know if it has to change like every year, you know, like. Yeah, every year I think it's pretty crazy. Yeah, maybe keep them a little longer than that. Or like if it's if it's good, um, bring it back for in a couple of years or something there they might have to start repeating some in the future but yeah i don't think it's like a problem but it's also like what are they doing sometimes with some of these jerseys <laughs> yeah this in-season tournament game though was pretty interesting because uh well we were down like 10 with three minutes left and we yeah, found a way minutes. we found a way to come back which was absolutely insane uh i just I mean, the Grizzlies obviously were looking for a win. And uh, as you guys, as I told you guys, you know, someone tweeted that Grizzlies got their first win at long last. Now, obviously, they eventually got it. We'll get to that next one. Uh, <laughs> and then the Grizzlies blow it and they go to overtime with us. And uh, yeah, it, from there, we took the game. And uh, uh, Memphis right now, I'm not really sure what to think of them. I did not think they would be this bad to start the season. Again, they did beat us, though, in the game we should not have lost. Freaking. 24 to 2 run at the end is insane by the way 26 to 2 or, yeah 26 to 2 is absolutely an, ab- absurd uh but like what i saw out of shane you know shane sharp's been the theme i mean he's been really good every single game uh jeremy grant had a few big shots in here as well deandre and again being a menace on the boards brogdon obviously started and scoots absence and had a really good game in this one and uh tamani kamara this was the game where he started the second half over thibel and I was wondering if that was going to stick. And it looks like, obviously, next game they started Dival still. Uh, but it it was, a, it was a fun little win there because, you know, it felt like a game we let slip away. And then we won it, which was awesome because them blowing it was just phenomenal. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. Uh, fun comeback. We're actually, Tori and I were live watching the fourth quarter on YouTube. And then, uh, yeah, we were all defeated when we got down 10. We thought the game was over. And then uh, Zaire Williams had that yeah, stupid that part. technical yep. <laughs> where he hung on the rim. So thank you for that. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, the silver lining. Uh, Brooke mentioned this on the broadcast uh, that the Brooke mentioned this on the broadcast that uh, the silver lining is that at least they won the game that counted for the in-season tournament, and uh, the one they blew was was not the one that counted for that so there's still championship dreams alive yep. for that but uh yeah it made it made it kind of fun just to have something else on the line for the game and then um but yeah the blazers just once again had those little periods of time where they don't 
do much on the court. It's like, what what is going on? What is this offense? What is this defense? And it's just really frustrating. And then luckily uh, they turned it on at the end and it was hoping for the same thing. Uh, we actually got up what 12 in the in the next game Mm -hmm. in the in the second half and then that's when we scored two points the rest of the game yeah and that was where two free throws from brogdon i think right where those were our last two points which was absurd not a single field goal yep (laughs) crazy um there was like a lid on the rim i don't know what happened but um one interesting thing from this game was at the very end when sharp had to tie it with free throws and sharp has had his problems with free throws so i was actually really nervous when he was going the free throw line i'm like is he gonna hit both or he's gonna split them and he went up there and he hit both of them so i have to saw that as like tremendous progress for his development um in the clutch showing up huge uh those free throws were absolutely big so i'm loving what i'm seeing from sharp this absolutely year. and just the fact that he had the ball in his hands for several possessions at the end um uh, made the right play every time he had a kick out to Jeremy who uh, missed the three, but it was the right play. He was wide open. Um, and oh, yeah, he just... we had so many go in and out at the end of that game. That was <laughs> wild. Yeah. But we still, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just really cool to see him, especially without scoot and Anthony take over that lead guard spot and uh, lead us to a victory. Um, you know, Malcolm can do it too, but it was just, it was cool to watch Sharp do it because we know Malcolm can score, like, you know, take a possession at the end and make a bucket. Uh, but just to watch Sharp do it with all the pressure and, like you said, then step up and make the free throws at the end. Not only that, but, you know, get the contact to get to the line as well. Um, he had some really nice finishes in that game around traffic. And, uh, yeah, just uh, it's been so – that's been the – by far the best part of this season is just watching Sharp uh, blossom into the player that everyone was hoping he could become. Absolutely agree. I think if nothing else so far, what we can take away is Sharp. The development is definitely there, and it's awesome to see that. And of course, the final game that you know we just last saw, we play tomorrow as well. The Grizzlies Blazers in a game where we kind of mentioned earlier, we were up big in the third quarter, and then just went on the. I don't understand what happened, but just couldn't score for whatever reason. Couldn't score. I feel like Sharp at the end was too passive as well. I didn't like. Uh, he felt like he kept passing. And then Brogdon obviously mm-hmm. was shooting. I feel like a little too much. Um, he had a you know shot at the beginning of the shot clock from three for no reason, in my opinion. I was hoping to keep the Grizzlies without a win, but unfortunately, we had to be t- had to be the team that gave them their first win. But as you said, at least you know we got the in season tournament win, and they yeah. got the other one. Yeah, the the part about Sharp being passive is something that I'm I want to like keep my eye on looking forward because um we know when he's playing the shooting guard position or is at times like the main ball handler that he is aggressive. Um but he really needs to learn how to be aggressive when he's not in that main ball handler role. So um it'll be interesting to see when Scoot and Anthony both come back if he goes back to kind of just playing on the wings and the corners and waiting for a kick out threes or if he stays aggressive and they give him opportunities to handle the ball still um so I hope he can figure it out because like everyone says like oh well Sharp needs to be the guy or whatever and that's fine but you still need you still need someone else to go with him so he's got to learn to be able to play off of like whatever player and ultimately if that's scoot uh who it should be um you know considering the all the things we we did to get scoot um Mm -hmm. like scoot's not really if if he's projecting to be the best version of himself he's not going to be like a spot up shooter off ball while sharp dominates the ball so so Sharp's going to have to learn to be aggressive without the ball too. And that's one thing the coaching staff also has to do is one, keep him engaged when he's not the main ball handler. And two, uh, it was the Detroit game uh, where they called a lot of nice uh, screens off ball for him where he could curl right to the middle. Uh, we know he can pull up 
pretty much from anywhere inside the arc uh, off the dribble. So it got him going, and then he could curl around that, and uh, if they didn't stop him, he'd get right to the rim. Uh, they didn't do that as much the last two games against Memphis, um, but that's something that they really need to focus on, in my opinion, is making sure he gets going and uh, has has the aggressive mindset, whether he has the ball in his hands or not. Yeah, and one thing I for, failed to mention uh, in that, you know, the game that went to overtime, uh, we can't, you know, understate this enough. Sharps block and Kennard. Dude, oh, okay. that was absolutely yeah. insane it felt like he was out of position and just like floated to the right <laughs> spot and even he admitted after the game that he <laughs> fell asleep and lost <laughs> lost canard had no idea where he was they yeah. got really lucky to turn around and block it but yeah, yeah. Clutch I mean, when, you're, when you're insanely athletic like that sometimes you can just make crazy plays but uh yeah i mean obviously that was uh, the block of the season so far. Yeah, and... that was pretty crazy. That was awesome. Yeah, because uh, Kanar was wide open. It felt like, and Sharp yeah. said, "Nope." It was. But that's awesome. that's also something that he's like. It's awesome to watch the block, but it also shouldn't have happened like that yeah, because you shouldn't <laughs> you shouldn't lose your guy that badly with a few seconds left, and uh, they have to shoot within the next few seconds. So, um, hopefully, his his awareness uh, he can learn from that that you can't fall asleep like that um and hope to recover like that every time because you're not always going to be able to get to the the block there um but yeah it was crazy athletic play and it was awesome to watch yeah definitely uh but unfortunately obviously we know we've lost anthony simons already game number one we've lost goo henderson now and now we've also lost robert williams um, and Rob Williams could be out for the season. Uh, last update, I feel like we got, unless you've seen something recently, where uh, he could opt to obviously be out for two to three months or just go ahead and take the route of being out for the season. Um, the the injury didn't even look that serious in the Grizzlies game. He even walked off the court. So I was like, okay, it seems like he's fine. And then obviously we get the news that he could be out for the season. And, I mean, I this is – I know you guys especially were some of the ones saying that you know, Robert Williams, you know, injury prone. And I was also aware of that, but I also just, you know, and then Blazers luck with big men also. Um, For sure. I was excited about getting Robert Williams, but this is the bad that goes with Robert Williams. And uh, and you guys were trying to tell everybody that. And I mean, it, it's here that he got hurt and it, he's maybe out for the season. We don't know yet. I don't think unless if you've heard anything else, but I don't think they've said anything since that. Yeah. Just, just that he was looking for, second opinions to understand what his options were a little more clearly but yeah you never you never want to hear a season ending <laughs> that's just it's devastating for the blazers whether they were going to be keeping him and trying to win this season trying to make the play in or uh, the playoffs um this really kills their chances um to do so in my opinion and uh yeah if they were going to trade him at some point and we're trying to get his value up now his value is is obviously tanked so yeah um it's it's just really it puts them in a really bad spot and uh for the record i i really like robert williams as a player um it's just it's so hard to depend on players that can't seem to stay healthy, especially when they're a big man in Portland, like you said. Um, so to me, this has been one of the biggest issues for many years now um, is that the Blazers had Yusuf Nurkic, who you, you could count on him getting hurt for some at, like stretch of games every year. And then... Um, now the Robert Williams is an injury prone, uh, big man. And so when you have that, you need three competent centers in my opinion. And last year, the Blazers had Nurkic and Drew Eubanks and that was it. So when Nurkic hurt, Eubanks played, but they didn't have really any kind of depth at center. And this year they have Aiton and Robert Williams, which is a great one, two punch, but the minutes one of those two guys doesn't play, then you're you're really shorthanded, and and their only other big right now is Moses Brown. So 
um, unless they can make a trade to acquire some sort of big that can help in the near future. Um, it's just going to be really tough to maintain any level of consistency when um, Aiton has to sit, obviously, you know, 15 plus minutes a game and you can't really rely on anyone else to play that position. You, you can play maybe a Jabari Walker out of position and he can give you a few minutes, but, um, I just don't think that's going to hold up over the course of an entire season. Yeah, it's interesting because I believe Shams had said that, or it might have been Woj, I can't remember, but there was a lot of teams that were looking at Robert Williams and trying to pry that him away Woj. from Portland. Yeah, yeah and uh, it's interesting to think about what, what they would have done with him. Uh, and now, obviously, there's a chance he still plays again this season. It hasn't been yeah. determined yet. Uh, so, I mean, if he is back, maybe they still can get something for him. Maybe there's still a team willing to take a chance on him. If he does miss the season, would we play him next year? It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Robert Williams in the future, because, um, I, I was with every, you know, Blazers fan. I think all of us were super excited about getting him. He's a guy we've needed for a very long time. Guy would have loved to have had when we had Dame here and we just never really had that. Um, you know, other than when Nurkish was really good uh, until he got hurt. And uh, still, though, Robert Williams and Nurkic have felt a little bit different. But regardless, it sucked. You know, it sucks to lose him this, especially this early in the season. Like, we didn't even get him that mm -hmm. long. So, right. yeah, it's just all really disappointing. Injuries have piled up already. Uh, you know, the guard spots, at least, were kind of, you know, set at guard. We have a lot of guards. It's never been a problem here. Uh, it feels like big man forwards has always been kind of a weird, you know, problem for us. But guards, at least, were set. So, like, you know, we lost Simons. We, we still have Sharp that we can be excited about. We lost Scoot. We do have Brogdon. Um, but, you know, obviously if one of those guys go down, it gets to Skylar Mays. So, like, injuries have just been piling up. And then I'm glad we have depth of guard. But the big man spot, obviously we're looking at Moses Brown playing some backup five minutes if that's what they decide to do. And, uh, yeah, obviously Moses Brown is no Robert Williams. So this rest of the season, it's going to be interesting when Aiton is not on the floor and Moses Brown is playing those minutes. Yeah, you might see a little bit of doo-wop uh, playing on some of his two-way games. They can play up to 50. So, uh, yeah, you might see that. But uh, I think they'll probably play Jabari at center over Moses, at least initially. Uh, unfortunately, though, against a lot of teams, you can't really play someone that undersized. Yep. He he plays Jabari plays like a center, so it's probably okay in short stretches. Uh, but he just he doesn't have the rim protection interior defense you need out of a big man. So um, yeah, I think it's gonna it, it's gonna be kind of situational based um, against certain teams. But um, I really think if it's at all possible, we still have several players that aren't trade eligible until uh december 15th or in some cases january 15th so it's going to be really hard to get another big in here to make up for that if they're trying to tread water here but um i think they do have to try and find someone outside of the roster at some point um if he is out for the season do you think Joe will go after someone? Because obviously he never wanted to address getting another center outside of Eubank from Nurkic. Right. Or do you think he'll just sit on his hands like he did or like he has? I think it kind of depends on how they do. Um, if Scoot comes back. Uh, so Scoot's going to be out um, tonight if you're watching this on Wednesday. Yep. Um, and so... I was really curious to see if he was going to play in this game because they don't play until Sunday. So it was like they had a week in between games other than this one. So you get him maybe, you know, an, an extra few days of rest for that ankle and just make sure he's a hundred percent. But I was kind of hoping he'd play because we, we just need bodies right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, um, I don't know if he comes back on Sunday and they're playing relatively well and they just, it's obvious they need some center help. I think, I think this season they would 
possibly do it. Um, I don't think they're too concerned about tanking. I mean, obviously, at the end of the season, if if there's some games where if they lose a few, they could move up a few spots in the lottery or whatever. I think they would do that. But outside of that, I don't think their plan like is right now. Let's just try to lose as many games as possible and get the number one pick or whatever. Because one, I mean, most people, I don't agree with this, but most people think it's it's a little weaker draft and there's not like a clear cut prize for doing tanking like there was last season um but yeah i just think also they want to prove to people that they can be better than people thought they were and you can't really do that if you're you have all these injuries so yeah it'll be it'll be really interesting to see if they address it sooner rather than later yeah, I'm uh, curious to see if they do as well because obviously this team has operated like they've tried to force Dame out of here and it ended up happening. So now I wonder if Joe, you know, obviously I feel like he did a decent job on the Dame trade compared to some of the other things he's done in the past. So, like, it, it'll be interesting to see if he starts making more competent moves or not. Definitely can't wait till we see the deadline and stuff like that to kind of gauge where this man is going to be now that that whole saga is over the pressure isn't there anymore and I, I obviously there's still some a little bit but it was even bigger before um but other than that i'm like i said i'm excited to see that but obviously we won't see that for another what month now until that happens if we decide to do anything uh but let's get into uh who we're liking on uh do you want to do the blazers first or around the league Who's crushing it? Yeah, who's gotta crushing it? it? Right. Sorry, come on. I gotta say it right. What am That's I doing? Like the whole, I'm, the I'm whole selling it. Segment. I come on, the, man. I sold the no. segment. <laughs> who's crushing it? My oh. bad. My bad. My bad. Well, for the Blazers, I mean, it's still just sharp. We talked about sharp last week. We've already talked about in this episode. I don't really think there's another player that's necessarily crushing it as well as Sharp. So, uh, like, you can mention other players. I mean, there's been some good moments, like Tamani's. Yeah, that's some good what I was going to say. Kamara has been pretty fun at mm-hmm. times. Uh, DeAndre Ayton, obviously, has been pretty solid. And uh, the one thing that I feel like Ayton is crushing is his attitude. I mean, he's been great. Oh, yeah. He's been awesome. Like, his attitude has been a total 180 from what we saw in Phoenix. So, had to give Ayton credit for that, for sure. Yeah, also, I completely agree. That's the one thing with Ayton that I've been worried about this whole time is – what's going to happen if things don't go his way or if he's not scoring enough points or if he's feeling like he's not as big a part of the offense as he thought he would be, if he's not dominating every games or every game. And uh, yeah, I've I've been pleasantly surprised with his attitude so far. I hope it's uh, it's just him maturing and not – just him like faking it his way through it. Um, but yeah, until he proves or shows otherwise, I'll believe that he's he's changing and and really wants to be here and is is really willing to put in the work necessary to make that uh happen to where you know at some point you gotta you gotta put that on yourself, you know. You can't just keep blaming the coaches or or other situations or other players on your team or uh, you know, lack of shots or whatever. Like at some point, you just got to go out there and play and do the best you can under whatever you're given. And uh, I feel like he's doing that this season. So yeah, no complaints about Aiden so far. Yeah, definitely, I agree. Uh, I mean, Aiden has been just amazing, man. He's been a he's been a he's been a dream uh, return. I would say just attitude wise, and he's been really solid in the court as well. Um, but. As far as our who's crushing it around the league, and I told Eric this at the very top, and I'll I'll be the first to admit I'm not going to try to fake my way to this. Uh, didn't get to watch as much basketball as I would have liked uh, as far as other teams are concerned. Uh, so this is me as a box score watcher because <laughs> I just got to, like, this has only been, like, what, seven games, but I still got to ask. Cameron Thomas, man, what's this man <laughs> on? 28 <laughs> points per game, top 10 in scoring right now, 45 points last night. And I haven't been able to sit down and watch a single Brooklyn Nets game this season, but I have to, I have to ask, like, it, I mean, cause there's times where this man's getting DNPs and there's other times he's like going off for 43 games in a row. And I just, I, he's such a weird player to gauge for me. 
Like, is he a superstar? Is he just like some <laughs> guy that gets hot all the time? Like, it's so weird because I, I just don't know what to think of him. And the fact that he's top 10 in scoring right now, averaging 28 is just absurd in my opinion. Yeah, I actually had him on my who's crushing it this week yeah. as well. Uh, yeah. Um, well, he's shooting 48 over 48% on high volume too. Uh, but yeah, it's like, so he has that stretch you talked about where he had the three 40 point games last year. And that was, you know, mostly because they're, they made those trades and they didn't have all their players yet and stuff. And then they get all these wings and, and players back in the trade and then they start playing all them. And, Mm -hmm. and then he's back to not really playing or having a bench role. And it was just like a weird situation. And I didn't think he would get, the opportunity to even score this many points this season, but he's playing, you know, heavy minutes as well. So uh, yeah, shout out to him. I think he's just been playing so well. It's impossible to keep him off the floor. And uh, I mean, he's a legit scorer and I, I don't think this is fluky at all. I think he, he can score at every level. I mean, he's not the greatest three point shooter, but he's good enough to um, use that as a threat to get to the basket and get to his spots. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the guy, I mean, I, I don't know if he does much else on the court other yeah, than score. that's the problem. And that's, that's been the issue with him um, in the past. But, you know, if you're playing with several good defenders, they've been without Claxton um, most of the season. So uh, that's been tough to, to not have his defense back there. But if they're healthy, they have a lot of capable wing defenders and Claxton man in the middle. So they ha- they have the the defense to make up for one of their players being an offensive guy, and uh, so yeah, I I think it can work, um, and why not? But he does need the ball in his hands a lot to do it, and he doesn't really get a ton of assists or pass a lot either. So um, it, it, there is a trade off there, but for right now, man, the guy is impossible to guard, and he's. He's killing it, man. He's crushing it. He's crushing it. <laughs> uh, but who's some of your others? Uh, another guard that's killing it right now is Donovan Mitchell. Mm-hmm. Um, he's averaging over 32 points per game on crazy efficiency. Number one uh, score in the league right now, right? Top number one score? I think Embiid is higher. Oh, um, yeah. It might be Embiid. Sorry. I think Embiid's at like 34. Um, but... Mitchell's obviously, I mean, he's never been this high in scoring, but he's shooting an insane 66.9% true true shooting percentage with uh, 53.8% field goals and over 40% from three just been on fire so far. And he's also um, getting almost six assists a game as well. So he's not just scoring. He's also dishing the ball a lot. And uh, they've needed they've needed his offense, but he's really stepped up this season so far. Yeah, I, when Donovan Mitchell first, like you know, obviously was, you know rumored to be traded out of Utah. Uh, before the trade actually happened, I was tell you know I was telling people in my videos, and uh, I probably have a video to prove it. I was saying, you know, a weird team that would be awesome to get Donovan Mitchell, and I said the Cavaliers because <laughs> they had yeah. like Laurie Marketing, they had some assets and. You know, they did it. I was like, wow, it actually happened. Because obviously the Knicks were the team that rumored the whole time. And, you know, he's been in Cleveland this time. Or this, you know, obviously been in Cleveland since then. (laughs) And they were like a dark horse team for me last year. Obviously, they really disappointed in round one. Um, And I feel like still, this if this team is going to go far, they're going to need a guy like Donovan Mitchell leading the way. Garland is great, too. Mobley, obviously. I love the ceilings of those two guys. But Mitchell is the guy right now. Um, and I just, it's obviously the one thing we know, um, is he going to be traded? Like, does he want to be in Cleveland is the worst kept secret in the league or whatever it is. But I hope to keep Don, I hope Don Mitchell wants to stay in Cleveland because they're a fun team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just getting him and keeping their young core of Jared Allen and Mobley and Garland. That's, that was a really cool combination. And, uh, yeah. So for those that don't know, he's um balking at signing an extension with cleveland right now um so there's some talk that maybe they would look to move him because they don't want to risk him bolting in free agency uh so yeah it would be disappointing if he gets traded again and then becomes 
kind of on that James Harden route where he's yeah. getting traded to multiple teams and he's a good player, but you know, how, how much can you depend on him wanting to be there for more than a couple of years? So I, I really hope that's not the case because this Cavs team, if he uh, resigned there would be set as long as they continue to be, to make okay moves around that core. Um, I mean, that's, like 10 years they could probably be a good solid team because they're all fairly young still yeah do uh, you have anybody else uh at all yeah the other uh player i wanted to mention was alperin shangun uh who's been uh the rockets have won three straight games they blow out they're, the kings last night <laughs> yeah they're three and three and uh after an zero and three start but uh shangun man he's he's been uh like Jokic light uh out there <laughs> Um, is he doesn't score a ton of points. He's averaging about 18 points per game, uh, but eight and a half rebounds, seven assists a game. And they've been kind of using him as a hub on offense. And, uh, he's been dishing out, had 12 assists last game. And, uh, yeah, just been really impressed with his evolution this year. And, uh, he's looking like, um, you know, someone that they can definitely build around, uh, in the future. Next week, I'm going to make it a priority to have like five players. I need to make up for my slack <laughs> this week. I will You're all make good, it, man. I will make it up to everybody, I promise. It's just this week was crazy for me, unfortunately. Um, no, you're good. Uh, but last thing I want to mention, unless you got anything else to add, is you know tomorrow's game, or sorry, tonight, I guess as you guys are watching this, this tonight's game, we head to Sacramento. De'Aaron Fox has been ruled out. Yeah, the Kings, uh, I mean, obviously Fox is what makes them go. Uh, so that's tough for them when they're when he's missing. Uh, but that, they still have a lot of really good players, a lot of players that cause problems for us. Uh, Sabonis is kind of like Shengun we just mentioned, can do it all, rebound, run the uh, offense through him. Um, and then they got... You know, Harrison Barnes has killed us at points yeah, in, the, say, in the past. Barnes is guaranteed to drop like 30 on us tomorrow, probably. Keegan's going to show out for his brother. Uh, yep. Davian Mitchell has uh, been a guy who's been a uh, pest on defense against us. Um, yeah, so they, they still have some competent players and stuff. And uh, so this, this will be a good matchup with uh even without fox i, I think it's going to be a tough game for us to win especially on the road do you think we see moses brown a little bit tomorrow or i feel like jabari could probably be fine on sabonis if they wanted to do that uh but yeah uh i mean their backups javel i guess um yeah i don't know uh I feel like Mo <laughs> javel is a good matchup for moses though too <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. That's kind of a funny matchup, actually. But uh, yeah, I I think we might see him for a few minutes. Um, but I think they're gonna hopefully Aiden doesn't get in foul trouble because that's the other thing. Oh man! <laughs> if he gets into foul trouble, we're toast, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, I think I think they'll probably try to play him 35, 36 minutes, and then yeah, I think they'll try to get away with Jabari for at least seven to 10 at center. Um, you might even see Chris get some power forward minutes tomorrow if, if needed, um, if Jabari's moving up to the center. So yeah, it's, uh, I'm interested to see what uh, Chauncey does with that. Yeah, it'd be cool to see uh, Chris play a little bit. Obviously we haven't really seen him play very much in this regular season just yet. Uh, maybe you can go out there and guard his brother a little bit, see how he does <laughs> doing that. Uh, but is, do you have any, do you have anything else? To add? Do we win this game? Do we, do we win this game or do you think we, we lose it? Uh, man, I hate to predict us losing. <laughs> I think it's going to be tough though. Um, if Scoot was playing, I think we'd maybe have a, have a better shot, but I'm going to say that the Kings beat us in their place. If it was home, I'd probably feel a little better about it. Yeah. How about I, you? I have a feeling either one of Herder, Barnes, or Malik Monk are going to just get red hot and kill us from three tomorrow. I don't know. Yeah. This is a gut feeling I have. Oh, yeah. Monk's a guy that can kill us as well. Yep. Definitely. Um, I do have one more thing. Uh, watched your um, 
you you had a video today about the aforementioned Cam Thomas. Yep. Uh, you rebuilding the Brooklyn Nets around him. Uh, <laughs> yep. So go check that out if you're interested in that kind of thing. And then you also had a good video. I think it was yesterday about a 10 year rebuild with the Washington Wizards. Yep. So go check those out. Yeah, uh, they were they're they're a lot of fun. Especially the Wizards one is interesting uh, because like the draft class I use in in the first year, uh, I a day Mara is like really good in that draft class. I don't even know if he's like expected to be like a top five prospect or anything. I've seen someone sent me a list yesterday where he was like twentieth. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He's all over the map on draft boards. And that's something I, I don't know. Uh, leave a comment down below if you want this or not. So before we started the show, we were kind of brainstorming on segments and things to talk about during the show. And uh, I asked Brady if he was like, if he ever watched college basketball or kept up on prospects or something. Um, so uh, he said he didn't, but if you want, if if you guys want that, uh, we could have a, you know, Hoop Shocks prospect of the week, and I can tell you guys about someone that I've been watching um, in college or internationally that we can talk about. And uh, not college basketball started yesterday, so I'm pretty excited about that, getting to scout some of these guys, especially since the Blazers have all these draft picks now and stuff coming up. Um, so yeah, uh, I, we can do that if you want, but, uh, yeah, he's been, that guy's been mocked. Uh, like I saw him like late first, early second on some mocks, uh, today. And I'm like, what, <laughs> like, how is that possible? Um, but yeah, so he's probably someone that'll shoot up the draft board, you know, throughout the season. But, um, yeah, right now it's kind of, yeah, there's such, there's such wild fluctuations cause there's no. Consensus. I mean, there's there's a there's some a handful of guys who are definitely top five to ten in everyone's draft boards, but um, outside of that, there's like such wild ranges of some of these players that um, it's really gonna really gonna have to have a a good season to move up, um, and uh, and then there's always guys that rise up that you had no clue about prior to the season starting uh like brandon miller wasn't a guy on a lot of radars in terms of like that high top 10 pick or whatever like he was good but not thought of as like that good so um there's always those kind of guys too that rise way up draft boards yeah for sure uh people in the comments like always kill me because like i'll get the number one pick randomly sometimes just get lucky <laughs> yeah uh, and like uh, I've, you know, I've done, I use these draft, the same draft class all the time for same creator. Mm -hmm. And I know who like progresses really well and who doesn't. And yeah. everyone kills me for not taking Ron Holland. Cause apparently he's like realistically the consensus number mm -hmm. one, apparently right now, but he doesn't do well in 2k, which is why I, uh, tried, not, okay. I tried not to take him number <laughs> one, uh, yeah. but yeah, that's somebody that I've been getting killed by, but not, you know, or people have been killing me for not taking him, uh, number yeah, one when I get it. That's always the tricky part about 2K is like you want you want to be realistic, but then you also like don't want to like submarine your team. Yeah. You know, like, so like Isaiah uh, Collier in that draft class becomes an absolute stud. Like averages he? like twenty eight yeah. points per game. Like in the third fourth season, like nice. It's does just that stuff, like, does that person use updated a lot throughout the season? Or yeah, I, think, like, I, I definitely yeah, I think he does because uh, he has an active Twitter and he's pretty. Um, you know, uh, active in the community, I think. So I'm pretty sure he updates a lot, updates it a lot. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Holland's, uh, he's really good, uh, for like the Blazers though. I, everyone says he's like six, eight or whatever. I think he looks like six, five on the court. <laughs> so like, uh, and he plays kind of like a, a shooting guard. So I don't know if that's what the Blazers necessarily need. I mean, if he did measure at six eight and was, you know, forward size, I guess that would be a lot better. But uh yeah, I I, I like Holland a lot, just not necessarily for the Blazers, because uh I'd rather have Sharp in that role anyway. Yeah. Uh but is that is that it for this one? We got a shorter one today? Yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Appreciate all of you.
Yeah, uh, absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Obviously, we'll continue to watch these Blazers, see where we're at next week, see what the status is of this team. Do we go on a win streak? Do we go on a losing streak? When is Scoot going to come back? We'll be back on Sunday. There's a lot to unfold. And then, obviously, as we keep going down the line, trade season will be around the corner. Start to think about some things like that. Uh, but, yeah, we got an interesting season in our hands. It's so weird because we're, like, a rebuilding team, but at the same time, we're a team that, you know, could be good, but, like, and the flashes are there. But then, obviously, the inconsistency there as well, so. Just give the ball to Sharp and let Yeah, let just go. give it to Sharp, man. Like, just <laughs> let him shoot every shot, and we'll be good. <laughs> I think that's what everybody wants to see anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we appreciate uh, the support as always. Uh, but this has been Hoops Crush. Peace out. Go Blazers.